This video is going to be a description of how to hand basic surgical instruments and how to utilize proper safety precautions when we do that. So first, some basics about how to hand instruments. When we hand instruments, we really want to make sure that they're handed to function, which means that the doc doesn't have to reposition it prior to using it. So I would want to make sure that the tips are positioned correctly. I would never hand an instrument like this because the doc's going to have to reposition it before they're ready to use it inside the field, which is going to take more time and decrease the efficiency of the case. The other thing that does that is what we call instrument transfers. So when you pick up the instrument, you want to make sure that you're going to grab it where it's going to be handed from, rather than grabbing it some other place on the instrument, which is going to cause you to have what we call as an instrument transfer before it comes up to the field. So we want to make sure that you touch it once. If you have it in your hand, go ahead and make sure that you hand it up to the field. Okay, now another concept that you want to remember is that instruments are handed by the surgical technologist to the surgeon. We don't grab the instrument and just hold it here and wait for the doc to come and get it. You're actually going to take the instrument and if it's a ringed instrument, it's a little bit of a wrist snap that's going to place it actually into the surgeon's hand so they don't have to take their eyes off the field. If you just hold it here and wait for them to grab it, they're going to have to come to you, look away from the field, and then refocus back on what they're doing. So we want to make sure that we actually are physically taking and placing it into the surgeon's hand. And you do want to use a firm motion to do that because if it's really light, we're going to have confusion about who's holding on and eventually the instrument's going to hit the floor. So you do want to make sure it's a firm pressure of that wrist snap into the surgeon's hand. And when we're handing ring instruments, it's not a push, it's a snap of the wrist so that it goes into that space at the palm of their hand. All right, let's talk about some various different types of instruments here. We'll start with a knife. And really anything that's sharp is gonna be handed pretty much the same, utilizing the same technique. So when we pick it up, we never want to flip a sharp item in our hand because you're gonna poke yourself or somebody else. So if you need to reposition it, it's better to just reposition the knife by turning it around so that you can pick it up correctly, but you're never gonna take and flip it in your hand. So when we pick it up, we want to use the thumb and the first finger or potentially the second finger, depending on how stable you feel holding onto the knife, making sure that the sharp edge is down. So that way, if I don't get my hand out of the way, I'm not going to get cut by that sharp item. I also really want to make sure that as I hand it, I don't rotate my fingers underneath so that I'm not going to get cut. When I hand it up to the field, we call this pencil style, making sure that I kind of keep my other fingers out of the way. It's going to come up to the field and go into that web space that's between the surgeon's thumb and first finger. When they hand it back, they either will lay it down on the field and say knife down a lot of the time, which you want to make sure you pick it up right away so it doesn't poke the patient or poke a hole. They may hand it back like to you this way and everybody's paying attention to the knife as it's handed back. or the doc may actually put it back themselves on your mayo stand and you want to make sure that you stand back and don't have your hands up there when the knife is coming back to you. It's really not best practice to have the doc hand a knife back to you that's dirty. It's really best that they lay it down in a neutral zone type of an area where you can pick it up and then return it back to the safety device that's being utilized or up onto the mayo stand if you don't have one of these knife protectors. If you have a knife that has a safety blade, you are going to hand it with the safety covering the knife. If you retract it, it defeats the purpose of utilizing the safety mechanism. When we hand it up though, we hand it just like a knife and we treat it like the sharp that it is, even though it's protected. The doc's gonna retract the safety mechanism, make the incision, and then they're supposed to retract that and cover up the knife before they hand it back. However, you should always assume that a sharp is still coming back towards you and we still utilize the same safety precautions that we would with a knife that does not have the safety device on top of it. If I'm using my left hand, remember across the field we want to use left hand to left hand if at all possible. You want to go ahead and turn the knife so that then I can take and place it into the surgeon's hand. Again, making sure that you don't rotate the fingers underneath and then allow them to place that knife back. Again, any sharp item is going to be handed pretty much exactly the same as that. Now let's go back to those basics about which hand to hand things with. When we're handing across the field, the general concept is to hand right hand to right hand. And if I was going to hand with the left hand, left hand to left hand. But if you pick up an item with your right hand because you think it's going to the doc's right hand and then they present their left hand, we don't want you to transfer instruments between your hand. 
you already have it in your hand, simply rotate that instrument and go ahead and place it into the hand of the doc that's been presented. Okay. Now, if the doc is standing beside you, we really want to try to utilize the hand that's furthest away. Because a lot of times you're standing very close to your surgeon, and if you try to utilize the hand that's close to them, you're going to be bumping into them and whatever they're doing up at the field. So we try to utilize the hand that's furthest away, depending on if you're handing to the right hand or to the left hand, it doesn't matter. You're still trying to use the hand that's furthest away when you're handing those items up to the field. You may utilize the hand that's closest when you're handing pairs of things, but for the most part, you're using the hand that's on the outside edge. Okay, let's go back to some of those other sharp items. So if you have sharp retractors, such as Sen rakes, three-prong rakes or four-prong rakes, again, we want the rake portion to be down. We don't want it up like this, because if you're, you have your hand over it and you don't get your hand out of the way, you're gonna get snagged. So we wanna make sure that it's down. You're gonna hold it not right here on the sharp, but up here on the shaft of the instrument, but leave enough space for the dock to be able to grab it. And then we're gonna hand it up to the field. What I'll see a lot of people do is take the hand and rotate it underneath, because this is kind of rounded right here. And then when it gets pulled, it goes right into the glove. So make sure that you stay on top of the instrument and don't rotate your fingers underneath. If I was going to hand to the left hand, again, I'm going to pick it up, making sure that the sharp is protected, and then hand it up to the field. These sharp items, if they get laid on the drapes, make sure that you pick them up right away so that somebody doesn't get poked or we don't have a contamination up at the field. Same thing with a four-prong rake or a three-prong rake. We're going to hand it this direction with the sharp down, making sure that those fingers don't get rotated underneath. Okay, let's talk about some ringed instruments. Ringed instruments are all gonna be handed by the box lock, and we want the curve of the instrument to go towards the surgeon's midline, depending on which hand they present. So remember, when we pick it up, we wanna grab it by the box lock so that the tips are up and the rings are down. If I'm going to the surgeon's right hand, I want the curve of the instrument to go this way if they're across the field from me, so it's gonna be handed like this. If I'm handing to their left hand, I want the curve to be this way, so it aligns with the midline. So again, I had it in my hand. I didn't switch hands depending on which hand she presented up at the field, okay? So to the right hand this direction, to the left hand this way, okay? Now these, when the doc's done using them, a lot of times they'll just lay them down on the field. They're not sharp, but remember it is your responsibility to pick up the instruments that are laying on the field and put them back exactly where they came from on the Mayo stand so that you know where to look for them when the doc asks for them again. Should a doc ask for two items, like these are two Kellys, if they ask for both of those at the same time, we're not gonna hand them like this. You wanna hand them one at a time so that the surgeon can use them. And they may take them in the same hand, they may take them in opposite hands, it just depends on where they're placing them in the field, but we're not gonna hand them both at the same time. So that concept applies to any ringed instrument. It also applies to scissors. So again, we want the curve towards the midline, the rings down, handed by the screw on the instrument. Now the scissor is usually a dominant item that's utilized in the dominant hand. So if I'm handing it with a non-dominant item, such as a forcep, it's always gonna be handed first. So if I was handing a scissor and a forcep, I would always hand the scissor before I hand the forcep. Now the forcep, let's talk about how we hand that. The forcep can really be handed by the front or the back of the instrument, but never in the middle, because that's where the dock is gonna grab onto it. And remember, it's a windshield wiper motion where it comes down and into that web space between the thumb and the first finger. It's not a jab where you hand it like this, okay? So if I'm gonna hand it to Laura, I can hand it this way, or I could potentially hand it from the back of the instrument too to go to either one of her hands, just depending on which hand she presents. Now be careful if you are gonna hand it by the tip that you don't get your glove or your finger caught inside here on a tooth forcep when you close it. Okay? So if I'm gonna come either to this hand or to this hand, whichever one she presents, or from the back of the instrument this direction as well. If I was gonna hand two debakies at the same time, I might do this, just depending on what is needed up at the field. So again, the scissor and the forcep, the dominant item and the non-dominant item, we're always gonna hand the dominant item first and then the, the non-dominant item to the non-dominant hand. 
Okay, retractors. If they do not have a sharp edge on them, such as this Army Navy, we can just hold on to the blade and then hand it up to wherever the surgeon positions their, positions their hand. Now, we would never hand a retractor like this because that's not to function. That's not how we're going to use it in the field. The doc's going to have to reposition it. So we'll, we can hand it this way or this way. And the way that we know which blade is going to be used is by how deep we are. So you take a look at what's going on up at the field and anticipate what depth of retraction the surgeon's gonna need. Now, if they're sharp, again, you have to make sure you use the same safety precautions that we use with the knife. So such as this sharp self-retaining gelpie here, I'm gonna make sure that my fingers aren't rotated underneath. It has rings, but I'm not gonna hand it like a ringed instrument because I don't wanna be underneath that sharp item. I'm gonna hold it on the top, place it up at the field, and then the dock will position it into the wound and then open it up. Again, if it gets taken out of the wound and laid on the field, make sure that you pick it up right away so that it's not gonna put a hole in the drapes. Now, one of the exceptions to the tips up, rings down on a ringed instrument is going to be your sponge stick in an abdominal cavity because if you think about how the doc's gonna use it, they're gonna take and dissect with it inside the wound. So I wanna hand it this way because then the doc's gonna have to reposition it in order to use it. So when we hand this one, you're gonna hand it to function, ready to use, into the abdominal cavity. Now, if I was working in a vaginal canal, which we'll talk about later, we are gonna hand it up because they're gonna grab it and then insert it into a vaginal canal. So you just have to think about how the instrument's gonna function and that will dictate how you need to hand it up to the field. All right, let's talk about some instruments that have suture attached to them. So I have a tie on a passer here, a right angle that's been loaded with a free hand tie. Again, I want the curve of the instrument to align to the center of the surgeon's body. Now, with the when it has a suture on it, you have to make sure that the suture is not in, all entangled here. So we wanna make sure that we kind of take the suture and either drape it over the back of the hand or just use your other hand to hold it out of the way and then hand it up to the field. If I was gonna go to our left hand, I'm gonna go this direction, just making sure that that suture isn't all entangled around the instrument. The other thing too you have to pay attention to is if this suture is long, you wanna make sure it's not hanging down below a sterile level. Make sure that it's secured up in the field. Now following an, an item like this that gets handed up to the field, next you're gonna hand up a suture scissor after you hand a force up to the doc who may need that to tie whatever they're ligating off. But you're ready with that suture scissor either to hand to the doc if they're gonna cut or to the assistant or maybe yourself if you're gonna be the one that's gonna be cutting that suture up at the field after it's been secured. When we hand a needle holder that's been loaded with a suture, it's gonna be similar. So you wanna, again, make sure that that suture's out of the way, that it's not gonna be all wrapped around the instrument. And then on this one, you have to have it loaded for if it's a right or a left-handed surgeon. So this one's loaded for a right-handed surgeon. So we always wanna hand it so that the tip of the needle is gonna poke the person who's gonna use it in the nose. So to go to her right hand across the field, I'm gonna hand this, make sure that the suture's secured up at the field, and hand a forcep as well. And then I'm ready with that suture scissor, whether I'm gonna be the one that's cutting that suture or handing it up to the assistant who may be the one that's cutting that suture up at the field. Let's do that one again because a lot of times this is the one that people get confused on. So if I'm handing across the field, I want the tip of the needle to poke the dock in the nose, the person that's gonna be utilizing that instrument, secure the suture up at the field, hand the forcep, and then get ready with that suture scissor in hand to either hand to the assistant or to myself, whoever is gonna be cutting that suture for the dock up at the field. Okay, a lot of times the docks when they're done will hand back the, the suture with the tip covered like this. Okay, they might lay it down so it's not gonna poke a hole in the drapes or poke somebody else. Well, that doesn't work very good for you to put it into the needle book portion here. So remember, it's never okay for you to take your fingers and touch a dirty needle. So you need to be able to drop it and then pick it back up with your needle holder and then position it into that needle book. Remember the needle books have an adhesive back here so you can stick it down so it's not moving all around your mayo stand. And also remember, if you don't have time, just drop it in your magnet portions until you have time to go ahead and reposition that because it's never okay for you to touch a dirty needle with your fingers. Beside you, if a doc's beside you when we hand that needle, you again want to make sure that that needle is po pointing towards their nose, okay? And again, we want to keep that suture out of the way, draped back over your hand hand the suture, secure the end up at the field, and then hand up the forcep and get ready with that suture scissor in hand to anticipate the need to cut the suture when they're done taking their stitch. Okay, let's do that one again, one more time. So to the right-handed dock beside you, 
again, we're going to hand the suture so the needle faces this direction, hand the forcep, and get ready with the suture scissor in hand to cut the suture. Okay. Let's do one to a left-handed dock on this side of the field. Okay, remember you're going to have your needle loaded differently for a left-handed surgeon. Okay. So to the left-handed dock, we want the needle to go this way. So it's going to poke them in the nose. I'm going to hand up the forcep and then get ready with the suture scissor in hand as well. Just remember, the tip of that needle needs to poke the person in the nose that's going to be taking the stitch with it. All right, one more item here. Okay, we have the injection. Now, remember, all of your medications are going to be labeled appropriately with the strength, also listing out the entire name of what's included and the concentration of the epi if there is epi in the medication that is being injected. Okay, so when we hand that up to the field, you need to state that name in its entirety so that the surgeon knows exactly what's being injected. Now remember, there's never any two-handed free uncapping like this because remember for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction, you're going to poke yourself. So when we take the needle off, you need to release it here at the base. And you can really do this with one movement where when you tip it down, then the lid's going to fall off and then you can hand it up to the field just like a knife, making sure that that sharp is protected underneath the palm of your hand. And as you hand it up, you're gonna make sure that you state again that full name that's on that medication, okay? So I have half percent sensorcane with epinephrine, one to 200,000. Doc's gonna do the injection. Sometimes they'll lay it on the field. Sometimes it'll come back to you like this, just like the knife did. And then when you get it back, remember there's no free-handed uh, recapping. You're gonna scoop it up and then slide the cap of the needle on all the way. Make sure you don't push it down like this. Make sure you don't push down on the cap like this because the, the needles, especially if they're large needles like 18 gauges, have gone through the side of that cap before, okay? Now across the field, let's do that one too. So again, we're gonna release the cap here at the base. Remember that the first times that these are uncapped, they are very, very tight. So you will do yourself a favor by just uncapping your needles a few times before you start your case, okay? So release the cap, allow it to fall, okay? Get that cap off, hand it up to the field, half percent sensor cane with epinephrine, one to 200,000. They'll do their injection, it'll come back to you. And then you're gonna scoop up that cap and then slide it the rest of the way on. Remember, it's your responsibility to keep track of how much injection was utilized during the case. And every time it comes back to you, if it's only been partially used, you wanna make sure that you take the needle off and always fill it back to 10 cc's before you hand it back up to the field. Return the needle and then you would uncap it before you hand it back up. Keep track of how much you're using, but every time it goes to the field, it should have 10 cc's in it so that you can keep track easier. Even if you have a 12 cc syringe, it's a lot easier if you fill it to 10 cc's. Thank you.